Hello. Today we're working in the first activity of the uh, world building chapter in Learn to Code 2 called Uniting Worlds. Our goal here is to add a new block to our puzzle to bridge two worlds. Okay, so hopefully you looked at the introduction and in the introduction it showed you that in this chapter we're going to be um, adding gems, uh, adding switches, um, adding blocks to our world uh, to, you know, modify them to help solve puzzles or do other interesting things. So in this case, if we look at the puzzle here, uh, it's pretty clear that we're not going to get too far. We're going to get about halfway across to the single switch on the far end uh, before we uh, are stuck because we can't uh, come to this tile right here. There is no tile at this location that will let us continue along the path. So we're going to need to add a tile to that location, uh, a block. So the way to do this is uh, it's just uh, we need to create an instance of the block and then use the world.place function to put it in the right place. So remember to create an instance of something. We can say uh, let uh, a new block, let a new block equals an instance uh, of block like this. Okay, so that creates a new block, but we haven't placed it anywhere. So the way to place it is to say world.place. And we've got two options here. We can either place it at a certain location, or we can set it at a certain location with a direction. And in the case of a block, we really don't care which way it's facing. So uh, let's use this one over here. So. There it is, world.place, and the item we want to place is the instance of block we just made here. So a new block is the thing we want to place. And the column and the row where we want to place it, well, uh, remember from previous puzzles that if you tap anywhere in the puzzle, it gives you the coordinates uh, or the location of that particular spot that you're tapping and the first number in the coordinates, in this case 3, is the column and 1 is the row. So when I tap here, I see that I want to place it at column 3, row 3. So we'll put that in here, column 3, row 3. All right, let's go ahead and try this and make sure that it puts a block in the right place. Okay, there it is got a nice block and that completes the path so we have a continuous path from the character starting location over to this uh, over to this switch on the far end here so uh, now this uh, path is right up our alley we've done uh, in the last chapter we did a lot of functions that help us wander along a path like this okay we do things like we move forward until we're blocked and then we check if we have a clear path to the left or the right. If we have a clear path to the left, we turn left and continue wandering. Uh, but if we have a clear path to the right, we turn right and clear and, and continue wandering. So that's going to be our plan for this one, and it'll work uh, just great, I think. So uh, in here now, let's uh, just say, um, let's do this here. Let's say as long as something is true, we just want to wander along path, wander along path, okay? Now that something is true, we want to wander along the path until what? What's our ending condition here for our while loop? Yeah, it's up here at this, uh, at this switch. We know we're done when we're at a switch, right? So let's wander until we get to a closed switch. So we'll say while or as long as we are not is on a closed switch, we want to just keep wandering along the path. Now when we are on a closed switch, this while loop will stop and we'll be down here. And the last thing we want to do before we end the puzzle, because we'll be standing right here on this switch, is let's just go ahead and toggle that last switch. And that'll be the end of it. Okay. 
So uh, the last thing we have to do here is uh, finish up uh, writing by writing this function wander along path, which is just an abstract idea that says uh, move and then check if we need to uh, turn left or right. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Funk wander along path. Uh, we said we just want to move forward move forward and then after we move forward we want to check if we're blocked so that on the next uh, the next turn when we wander along path again the next time this function is called we can have a clear path to move forward uh, if we're blocked here we want to do something like turn okay so let's say if we're blocked it means we're blocked to the front we need to uh, I'll add a you know a comment in here check if we have a clear path to the left or right, okay? And if we have a clear path to the left, we'll turn to the left. If we have a clear path to the right, we'll turn to the right. So uh, to check that, we can just say, if we're not is blocked to the left, then we'll turn to the left, okay? Down here, we can say, else if, we are not blocked to the right, then let's turn to the right. Okay, so after we, if we are blocked and we turn to the left or we turn to the right, we know that since we're not blocked in that direction, we do have a clear path. So the next time we call wander along path and we'll come up here and move forward, we won't be in trouble. We won't be up against a up against a cliff or a wall or something like that so we'll be able to move forward okay okay uh, let's try this again uh, let's just look at our main program to make sure before we run this that everything is okay so this says as long as we're not on a closed switch so none of this path is on a closed switch except this very last location we want to wander along the path and when we're done, or when we are on the close switch, we're just going to toggle the switch here. And wander along the path says move forward, check if we're blocked. If we are blocked, we want to check if we're blocked to our left. If we're not blocked to our left, that's a good way to turn. Uh, otherwise, if we are, then we can check are we blocked to our right. If we're not blocked to our right, then turning right is the good way to turn. Okay, this looks like it should work. Let's go ahead and uh, run the code, stepping through the code. So we're going to start in the while loop. Uh, first, we're going to place our block. And we start on the while loop, and we say as long as we're not on a closed switch, we wander along the path, which most of the time is just a move forward. Then we check if we're blocked. If we are, we check do we have a clear path to the left. If we do, turn left, and then call wander along path again. Again, this is mostly going to be just a move forward check if we're blocked we're not so we go on move forward check if we're blocked this time we are blocked uh, and we have an opening to our left so we're going to turn to the left that's good it's moving forward sorry that was a turn to the right and check keep moving forward are we blocked no wander along path move forward are we blocked this time we are we're not blocked to our left, so we turn left. Call wander along path, which is a move forward. Check if we're blocked or not. Move forward. Check if we're blocked. This time we are. So do we? are we blocked to the left? Yes. Are we blocked to the right? Yes. So we just end up coming down here and doing nothing. And then when we come to the while loop, we check, are we on a closed switch? We are. Uh, so we stop the while loop and we come down and toggle the switch and we're done. Okay? All right, nice. Uh, fairly simple uh, program as long as we remember our function wander, which just says move forward and then check if we're blocked. If we're blocked, deal with it by turning left or right, depending on whether we're blocked or not in that direction. Okay, good. And the uh, last thing I want to review is what we did at the beginning here is we can create a new instance of some block here and assign it to a variable, a new block, and then place that instance of block at a certain location 
with defined by a column and a row. All right, that's it. In the next few, uh, the next few activities, we'll be building more and more blocks and placing them in the puzzle to help us solve those particular puzzles. So we'll see you then.